Greetings, and welcome back to Gripping Horror. Today's story takes place 22 kilometers north of Tulum, Mexico. The Sistema Sac Actun is the world's longest underwater cave system. Sac Actun lies along the Caribbean coast of Yucatan Peninsula with passages that run to the north and west of Tulum. The Yucatan Peninsula is known for many things, among them its vast number of cenotes. There are, according to some estimates, around 6,000 cenotes just in the Yucatan Peninsula, and more are being found every year. The ancient Maya people commonly use these cenotes as a water supply or for occasional sacrifices because their belief was that cenotes led to the underworld. These natural pits have come to serve a whole different purpose in the 21st century. Many cenotes are now used as diving sites for those who crave the adrenaline of the abyss. But they are not without risks. The Yucatan Peninsula is often referred to as a great Swiss cheese because cenotes have been able to form in such large quantities in this area. This is due to the porous limestone that can be found here. These water-filled caverns were formed in the limestone bedrock when rainwater eroded the surface and seeped into the earth, resulting in natural sinkholes that lead into deep underwater caves, creating what we know as cenotes. Certified divers Kent Hirsch and Michael Nast were cut from the same cloth, passionate and athletic men. Kent, 53, a dentist with a practice in Centerville, was a cyclist and skier who recently took up skydiving. Nast, 36, was an antitrust lawyer with his family's Lancaster-based firm who enjoyed gardening and loved wine and animals. What brought them together was their shared love for diving. They dove together off the coasts of Florida and New Jersey, exploring shipwrecks and underwater caves they even had diving nicknames for each other. Hershey's was Dr. Deco, short for decompression, and Nast's was Caveman. Both Nast and Hirsch were meticulous divers who carefully planned their excursions and took no chances. Michael and Kent had decided that it was time for another one of their great diving escapades, so they planned a trip to Tulum, Mexico, to go diving as part of a larger group of nine divers, including a guide. The group had been diving together for a number of days, exploring the beautiful wonders of the peninsula, until one fatal cenotes. This is the story of the cenotes Kalimba disaster. On the morning of Tuesday, December the 9th, 2004, the group traveled to cenotes Kalimba on the Coba Road, they had done a traverse dive of the cave system a day earlier, so the group was fairly familiar with the cave and very excited to continue their exploration of Sac Actun. Cenotes Kalimba is not particularly the deepest underwater cave, but that does not make the dive easy. Personnel working at the dive site described Cenotes Kalimba for experts only. It is a small, difficult to navigate cave with very fragile and confined spaces. Shortly after arriving, the group split into two teams, one team of five, which included the guide, and one team of four, which included Kent, Michael, Jane Downey, and William Downey. Both teams planned to enter and then exit the cave system at Cenotes Kalimba. Led by the guide, the team of five descended first, following the main Kalimba guideline to its end, where they would encounter a snap and gap. The snap and gap is a piece of line of approximately 20 feet in length that attaches to the end of the Kalimba guideline to the Passa de Legato guideline to create a continuous guideline. Typically, if not in use, the snap and gap is rolled up and placed at the end of the Kalimba line. After reaching the snap and gap, Team 1 installed a PNDM labeled number 1 on the snap and gap line to show any other teams in the cave that this line was being used and to mark their exit at this intersection. After successfully making it past the snap and gap, 
Team 1 continued downstream following the Paso de Legato line for 65 feet until the guide line makes a hard right turn. In this section, a white arrow marks a short jump to a permanent guideline on the left that leads to Cenote's box gen. Team 1 installed a jump spool the distance of approximately 6 feet to connect the two lines. The white arrow also points downstream towards Grand Cenotes, away from the direction of their intended exit. To counter this, Team 1 installed PNDM number 2 on the exit side. This would get rid of any confusion, showing both teams intended exit back towards the Snap and Gap and the Kalimba line. One last cookie was placed on the jump spool line, close to the spool end. On exit, if PNDM cookie number 3 had been removed, the remaining team were to take up the spool that was connecting the Paso de Legato line and the box chain guideline. Team 1 would then follow the permanent box chain guideline for approximately 500 feet, installing an additional spool to make a 5 foot jump to the left that closes the gap on the box chain line and continue on the circuit in a clockwise direction until reaching Cenote's box chain. Michael, Kent, Jane and William were to descend shortly after Team 1, allowing them a head start to install the reels and PNDMs. The plan for Team 2 was to follow Team 1 to the box chain line using the spores and PNDMs installed by Team 1. As mentioned earlier, Team 1 installed a spool that closes the jump on the box chain line before continuing in a clockwise direction. Team 2 would bypass the jump installed and continue in an anti-clockwise direction following the line towards Cenote's box chain until they hit thirds. Unlike Team 1, Team 2 was expected to turn the dive before reaching box chain based on air consumption rates. Michael, Kent, Jane and William were expected to be exiting ahead of Team 1 as they would have turned their dive earlier. It should be noted that one member of Team 2 had a digital camera in an underwater housing equipped with strobes and was planning on taking photographs during the dive. Team 1 completed their dive to Tenote's box chain where they surfaced for approximately two minutes and then returned the way they had come, removing the box chain circuit spool and the spool connecting the permanent box chain line to the Paso de Legato line, along with PNDM cookies number two and number one. As mentioned earlier, Team 2 was supposed to turn their dive before reaching Cenote's box chain, so the assumption was that Team 2 had already exited ahead of them. Also, PNDM cookie number 3 was no longer in place and based on their protocol, on exit if PNDM cookie number 3 is no longer in place, the remaining team should take up the spool. Team 1 reached the surface at Cenote's Kalimba after a 99-minute dive. Having entered the water at approximately 9am, exiting at 11.10am with a maximum depth of 44 feet. At no time during the dive had the two teams encountered one another. Upon reaching the parking area, the guide became concerned that Team 2 were not there as expected. Panicked, the guide then drove in one of the group's vehicles to the Grand Cenotes entrance, thinking that the lost members of the group may have exited there. Not finding them at Grand Cenotes, the guide rushed back to Kalimba, where Jane and William would just barely surface, sharing air with approximately 500 PSI left in one set of doubles. As composed as they could be in the situation, Jane and William informed the guide that Kent and Michael were still in the cave. His stomach sunk. At this point, the guide and two of the other members of Team 1 got back into the water and headed back downstream along the permanent kalimba. As they reach the 250 foot mark from the entrance, they spot Kent and Michael with their second stages out of their mouth, facing towards the exit of kalimba. Both Kent and Michael had zero pressure in their tanks. Kent's primary light was still burning. Michael was floating at the top of the cave ceiling with his long hose deployed. His primary light was off and stowed. His backup light was turned on and laying on the cave floor below him. One of the divers from Group 1 was able to recover Kent on his own, leaving the guide and the other diver to recover Michael's body, which would prove difficult due to the small and restrictive nature of the cave passage 
and his tangled long hose that had been deployed. The local authorities took possession of Michael's and Ken's bodies upon recovery to the surface and interviewed the guide and all the members of the group at the Ministero Publico in Tulum. Now, let's take a look into what went wrong. Team 2 began their dive at Cenotes Kalimba shortly after Team 1. They reached the snap and gap at the end of the Kalimba line in approximately 32 minutes, having traveled through very small caves with multiple minor restrictions. At the snap and gap, they turned left, following the permanent Paso de Legato line downstream for approximately 65 feet to the jump to the box chain line. They turned left at this intersection and followed the jump spool over to the box chain line and continued along this line until the dive was called by one of the team members upon reaching thirds. The team turned around and swam back to the spool closing the six-foot jump from the box chain line to the Paso de Legato line. At this intersection, the last person in the team too removed PNDM number three but left in place the jump spool and the PNDM number two marking the exit back to Kalimba. The team of four all turned left at this intersection rather than right and back to their exit as indicated by PNDM number two. Team two then swum following the permanent Paso de Legato line downstream for 25 minutes and a distance of approximately 1,400 feet. Throughout this time, the team member with the camera reportedly continued to take photos the team would have swum past four key directional arrows, all pointing downstream towards Grand Cenotes. That clearly signifies that the line is not heading toward their intended exit at Cenotes Kalimba. At its end, the permanent Paso de Legato line is separated from the permanent Grand Cenotes Traverse line by a distance of approximately 70 feet of darkness. At this point, Team 2 finally realized they had made a very grave mistake. One member of the team deployed a safety spool and began a search for the line or exit. The other three members of Team 2 remained on the Paso de Legato line during the search. Unfortunately, the search was unsuccessful and the dive team turned around and swam back to the Paso de Legato guideline. At some point during the return swim, the dive team of four became separated into two buddy pairs. It is not known exactly how far apart the two buddy teams were. However, Jane and William, who survived, stated that they could see the lights of Kent and Michael behind them. Jane and William began sharing air at some point on the Kalimba line and just made it back to the surface in time. Nast and Kent also began sharing their air, inching and inching closer to the exit. Both determined to survive, but unfortunately failed to make it all the way back to the Cenotes Kalimba in time, drowning approximately 250 feet short of the exit, with no air left. Jane and William had a total bottom time of 129 minutes when they were found. Michael and Nast had 148 minutes of total bottom time, giving a difference of only 12 minutes during which they had drowned. As seen countless times, one mistake is the difference between life and death when it comes to cave diving. In this case, disorientation and confusion led Michael, Kent, Jane and William to become lost and unable to find their way back out of the cave. Jane and William got lucky, but unfortunately, it was not Michael and Kent's day. Rest in peace to Kent Hirsch and Michael Nast, two passionate men who died doing what they loved the most. Their memory will forever live on. Thank you so much for watching. As usual, please feel free to comment any suggestions down below. Your feedback is always appreciated. Thank you again, and I hope to see you in the next video.